Greetings, and welcome to the Abyss. The snow will fall, the carolers will sing, but why should that change anything? We're decorating the Christmas tree today, y'all. I'm so glad you asked. I'm starting with a thrift store find, the world's ugliest wreath. But I thought these beads sort of looked like blood drops, and there are a lot of them. Step one is to disassemble. The fast forward makes it look like a breeze. It actually looked more like this. The pieces vary in size from three to six beads long, and they're filthy. It took me one good movie to get this whole thing apart. To clean the beads, I loaded them all in a Ziploc bag and filled it with warm water and dish soap. By shaking it back and forth, I create a makeshift dishwasher. The friction of the beads rubbing against each other helps get the dirt off. You can see how gross the water gets. I rinsed them off in a colander to make sure I got all the soap off, then placed them on a towel to get as much water off as I can. I transfer them to a dry towel to let them finish drying overnight. More shiny, drying overnight. Looks like berries, but it's not, it's beads. I decided I'm making these into blood drip icicles. Aw, how cute. The wires are pretty stiff and I prefer ornaments that dangle. So I'm going to string them together by removing the bead on the outside and creating loops with my needle nose pliers. That will give them more motion. On the top, I also make a final loop and connect the ornament hanger. Lovely. Now I just have to make about 25 more of these. No big deal. You're looking at a mighty humble bumble. I love how these turned out. Nice and dangly. They'll look great on the tree. Up next, more leftover candles from the birthday party. I'm going to turn these into bleeding candles, because of course I am. That means I have to paint these white. I'm using a white chalk paint. Chalk paint tends to be more opaque, which I'm going to need since these candles are so dark. I'm using an angle brush to go around the candle flame. I can already tell this is going to take at least two coats, if not three. I would suggest skipping this step and just getting white candles. But I like to use what I have on hand and what I had was purple candles. This is tedious and I hate it. It's Christmas time. Don't you want to eat good people? Not really. Never. This is after the first coat. It took two coats total. To attach the candles to the tree, I'm using these mini clothes pins. I'm painting them with black chalk paint. The paint will be basically invisible next to the dark green of the tree. You would think to paint them green, but if you don't get the color just right, the contrast between the two greens actually draws the eye. Black is the safe bet. Is the correct thing to do to take them apart, paint the individual pieces and put them back together again? Yes. Am I going to do that? No. Who has that kind of time? Ain't nobody got time for that. I even gave up on using the pliers. Red, wax, glue sticks for your hot glue gun. I had no idea these were even a thing. There was definitely a learning curve on this part. Make sure you have paper towels or something similar nearby to wipe the tip of the gun on as you go. I'm adding the blood. I started by running the glue all around the outer edge of the candle. It doesn't have to be super tidy. You'll be seeing the candle from the side, not the top. To make the drips, squeeze the trigger just enough to form a drip, then release the trigger and pull simultaneously to create the string. Normally, I hate how stringy hot glue is, but in this case, it works to your advantage. Again, there was a learning curve here. The first two didn't look great. I realized holding them in my hand, some of the blood drips were starting to fall sideways, so I changed gears and did them sitting flat on the table so gravity would pull the drips down. I did a combination of giving a squeeze at the top and letting gravity do the rest, or adding a drop and pulling up, depending on how it went. I also realized that wiping the tip of the glue gun off between squeezes got rid of all those excess strings. To attach the clothespins, I use a regular hot glue gun, making sure not to glue near the on-off switch. This way I can pop the pins right off after Christmas and go back to using these votives in the candles above my piano. As crafts go, this one was very satisfying. Highly recommend.
Not too bad if I do say so myself. Oh, but we're just getting started. You guys give up, or you're thirsty for more? On to the bulbs of doom! Thrift store find, 50% off. Got this whole box of clear iridescent bulbs for $3. I'm going to paint the inside of the bulbs, which means they're going to have to dry upside down while the paint drips out. I had a pile of these old paper cups from somewhere, so I'm cutting them up into drying racks for the bulbs. To paint the inside, I used everybody's favorite, Black 3.0, and also added some water. I mixed it together inside the bulb with the end of the paintbrush, and here's the fun part, then roll the paint around inside the bulb to coat the interior. The trickiest part is the neck. When it's all coated, I tip it upside down into its holder to let it dry for a few days. The reason I mixed it in the bulb is that it won't be blended completely, which should make some interesting things happen as they dry. Sure enough, the paint looks almost worm-eaten, and the iridescence on the outside looks like an oil slick. I love it. yippee ki mother after some trial and error, I realized the easiest way to do the neck was to plug the hole with my thumb and tip the entire ornament over. It wasn't tidy, but it got the job done. This project was also very satisfying, and it was fun to watch how the patterns emerged as they dried. What I was looking for was laser cut frames thinking I would paint them. What I found was this! Miniature resin Baroque style frames. Oh, this is so much better. It's a Christmas miracle. I didn't even know these were a thing. To the computer! Using Canva, I created three pages worth of Gothic themed images. I printed out test sheets at home to make sure they were the right size, and then drove over to a print shop to have these laser printed on bright white cardstock. It's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Look how great they turned out. I love it. It's good, it's good. Now it's just tracing the frame, cutting out the image, and gluing it on the back. Just, she says. Yeah, it took quite a while. Also, since I like my ornaments to dangle, I didn't want to just glue a hook on the back, so I used ornament hooks to create a loop for the hook to connect to. But of course, that made the back of the ornament ugly, so then I decided I had to cut out black felt to add to the back to cover up the ugliness. Whatever. They're really cute. That's the last of it. With all my ornaments done, all that's left is decorating the tree. Let's put this thing together, shall we? I got this black and white striped fabric remnant to use as a tree skirt. It has both Victorian and Beetlejuice vibes. I also added one of our red stage lights underneath the tree for extra dramatic effect. Our tree topper is Chowder, my favorite skull. By adding the giant star and some skeleton hands, it looks like she's holding it from the inside of the tree. I attach the hands to the branches with twist ties. I mean, come on. How cute is that? To add some winter witch vibes, I got these icy branches. I'm scattering them around the tree. I'd love to say I have a decorating plan, but that isn't true. I grabbed a few of each kind of ornament and start putting them on the tree, making sure they aren't directly next to each other. I find it easier to adjust them once I can see them on there. I'm also fluffing up the tree as I go. It gets a little smooshed in the box. We have a tree with the lights built in and I wasn't about to mess with trying to change the bulb color. It was also an extra challenge. Can I make a gothic tree with white lights? Why yes, yes I can. These glittery red snowflakes I already had and thought that they would complement the bloody icicles and candles, so I tossed them on there as well. And here is the finished product. I am thrilled with how it turned out. This could not be more perfect if I had planned it myself, which I did, and it's awesome. With the exception of the skeleton bursting out of the top of the tree, the rest of the decor is quite subtle, which I love. Being too on the nose is an annoyance of mine. From a distance, it looks like normal ornaments, but when you look more closely, wait, are those candles bleeding? Yes, yes they are. Are those blood drops? Yes. Yes, they are. Is that an anatomical heart? What's wrong with your bulbs? Whatever do you mean? <laughs> oh, hey, buddy.
I hope you enjoyed watching me decorate my Christmas tree. This is how to goth up anything, and I'm Cat Downs. Subscribe!